This is Modern Persian Food, a culinary podcast for today's food enthusiasts. We talk about classic Persian flavors, modern recipes, and embracing culture and identity through food. I'm Bita. And I'm also Bita. Welcome to our show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to podcast episode number 114. We have an exciting episode planned for you today. We're talking about Yalda, the longest, darkest night of the year, which happens on the night of the winter solstice. We want to inspire you to celebrate Yalda in whatever form you can this year and incorporate elements from this ancient festival to your holiday festivities and end of year events. We're going to filter through some poetry and some music in today's episode, and we are excited to chat about Yalda with you today. Hi, Vita Jun. Hi there. We've had other episodes where we talked about Yalda, but this year we figured let's go ahead and give a refresher to everyone. What is Yalda? And also be able to give ideas of how people can celebrate Yalda this year and also what our plans are and how we're going to be celebrating. Before we get into everything, do you want to maybe take a few minutes to tell everybody what Yalda is? Absolutely. I love these cultural spotlight type episodes that we have where we really hone in on an old Persian cultural tradition, in this case, a non-secular holiday Mm -hmm. that highlights the longest, darkest night of the year, a gathering of family and friends, respecting elders. It's a beautiful occasion to welcome the sun that comes. It's like a celebration of love and light and the sun and the sunshine that's to come after this night. Yes, the triumph of light over darkness. Yeah, so I think what I love about it is that given the chaos and all of the world and the things that are happening in Iran, we get to really hone in and focus on a beautiful tradition and try to bring it into our lives. And one of the cool things and ways that it can tie in is that the red color represents the glow of life. And so if you happen to be celebrating Christmas or winter holidays, I think it's really easy to bring in some of the elements of Yalda and bring in the red fruits of pomegranate and walnut, the warm, cozy feeling of Yalda. And we have a very hopeful light and bright future to look forward to. We have this really special song that my mom sang for us. It is a song that I think if you could reference for us with the pronunciation a little better than I can, my mom sang a little song for us. Yeah, Rorai Sitaragon by Parveen is the artist. And thank you so much to Maman Minu for recording this for us to incorporate on Shabi Yalda. Really, it's it's trying to stay up late and try to get through the night. So what people do is kind of share poetry and sing songs and play music and do some other activities that we'll to get into. And so we're going to start it off with Mama Minu sharing this lovely song. <laughs> ام شب یک سر شوق و شورم راضی باشد با ستارگانم ام شب یک سر شور و شوقم Oh, it's just so sweet to hear that. My mom used to love to sing and you know, what are the things that we really strive for and we thank you for listening and welcoming us into your ears is for you to have these conversations with your family and friends and connections. And it's really gotten me to be able to connect with my mom in a way that made her very happy. So thank you for the opportunity to be able to do that. Great. So let's talk about ways that we can actually celebrate. So the most traditional, authentic way to celebrate Shabbat Yalda is actually on Shabbat Yalda. Typically, December 21st, right at the winter solstice. And what you do is you gather and you have a sofre set up. And 
a sofre is basically a setting, and that we've seen sofre in various parts of Persian culture. We see that there's sofre when people are getting married. They have a sofre act. They have the sofre no ruse, the half scene that's placed on a setting. You know, we've talked about mehrgan, and we have a yalda sofre as well. I love it. We actually have a really sweet episode that we did our first summer that's just titled sofre, where we kind of talk about it. I think we are due for a refresh on that because since then, over time, we have learned of all these additional sofres. So we will have an updated episode for you guys just on specifically on sofres coming up hopefully early next year. But in the meantime, setting up the sofre for Yalda. So we see a kind of reoccurring theme on these sofre and there's usually um, some sort of light or flame. We see candles. We see candles representing light and brightness. And so Typical to all the other sofres, they are beautiful candles set up on your sofre yalda. And typically there are books there as well. Some books of poetry from Hafez or Rumi and also the beautiful Shahname Epic of Kings book that is really beautiful. And if you're lucky enough like me to have a really beautiful illustrated copy by Hamid Rahmanian, it is super beautiful. We'll actually link to that in the show notes because I think everyone should have a copy of this. So you have these books set up and also what you have on the sofre are some traditional foods that include like pomegranate, again, the red roundness of the pomegranate, and also watermelon, as these are the bright red fruits representing light and really the triumph of the light over darkness is really these elements of light shining in on the sofre. I think the watermelon is one of the unique and interesting fruits. You know, pomegranate is a winter fruit. There's often grapes, persimmon, which are winter fruits. Mm -hmm. And I remember a couple of years ago when I was first getting exposed to this cultural occasion, I was so surprised and kind of flabbergasted. Why is watermelon a part of it? And so there's some history behind that. I think that families would kind of store them in a cold, dark place Mm -hmm. and then bring it out. And, you know, it again, it represents sort of the crimson and the red color. And I think it's kind of fun to try to break out watermelons in the middle of the winter to put on the spread along with our cozy foods and fruits that are present. Yeah, absolutely. So what are some other traditional foods? I know that you love ajil. Tell us about ajil. Yeah, so Ajil is the Persian trail mix blend. It makes an appearance at many occasions in Persian holidays. It definitely appears for our winter solstice Yalda. Some of the unique things include like dried figs, mulberries that we call toot. Sometimes Ajil will have a variety of nuts, hazelnuts, walnuts, almonds, and definitely dried fruit. I like dried cherries a lot, so I'll put those in there. Yeah. There's a variety of raisins that often is present. It's kind of like a long, skinny, yellow raisin. And in recent years, I started to make like kind of little favor bags. I'll take the ajil and put it in a cute clear bag and put a ribbon around it. Last year, I mailed them out as part of my holiday or winter gifts to my long distance friends and family. And this year, I'm going to have them as sort of party favors in a cookie party exchange that I have every year. So I love Ajil. I love having a big bowl of it out. I have this cool bowl that my mom gave me that's kind of ornate and it has like a special spoon to scoop the Ajil out with. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the long and the short of Ajil for me. We love Fess in June in the winter, and it is a somewhat traditional dish to make on Shabba Yalda, the Yalda night. And that is our iconic pomegranate paste or pomegranate molasses with chicken, walnuts. It's a stew that simmers and cooks that is just delicious. It is both sweet and savory and rich and just like a perfect wintery food. Yeah, definitely very hearty. Stick to your ribs. It's super delicious. I love the idea of having the dried 
fruits like dates and raisins in adaspodo, so like a lentil rice with a lot of like caramelized onions and a little bit of cinnamon. That to me sounds like a beautiful dish to serve on Shabiyanda. I think also Asherishte, some people have Asherishte or Asha Anar for like a traditional soup. And also kufte. Kufte tabrizi is one version or other types of kufte, which are kind of like meatballs that sometimes will have dried fruits at the center of them. That's always a delicious way to celebrate and bring in yanda as well. Yeah, both my sides of the family are from Tabriz. If you go far enough back and my mom makes a really good kufte tabrizi and she's been talking about it lately. It's a big, I'm talking about like two fist size meatball. Uh And it's not just meat. It has a lot of things in it. I think my mom's has like maybe yellow split peas and it has like maybe plum Mm -hmm. in the middle with the pit. Yeah. But there's different ways to make it. It's really delicious. My mom's has like, I think a little bit of a tomato sauce on it. And the Edis Polo, I just bought two huge bags of lentils because I'm so excited to make, that's a real comfort food for me. And I, my recipe does definitely have dates and raisins and nuts. Uh Uh-huh. Yes. So it does tie in nicely to the Persian foods that we have on Shabi Yalda. Yeah, so you definitely can't have yanja without tohme. Tohme are like seeds, like sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds that are toasted and salted. A fun way to pass the time is to be cracking the shells off of those seeds and having them and having tohme. Definitely a Persian cultural thing. Persians love it. And I love having the really salty tohme and like kind of sucking on the skin a little bit just because I love that salt. I'm not sure if you have experienced it yourself. I know that I believe your mom shared some memories of of a corsi with you. When I was little, we had a kind of like little mini version of a corsi. I just have like faint memories of it. Really? Uh Uh-huh, yeah. I can kind of picture it as being a low table with a heater under it and a beautiful blanket over it that you all sit around. And my mom described it as what you do at night back in the olden days before sort of TV time, before Netflix nights. You sit around and stay cozy and warm. But what is it exactly? There's a total culture around it. So I think like a long time ago, kind of like in the generation of our parents and things like that, they would all sit around a big corsi. So I think it was like, you know, six or seven feet wide, big, low table that you kind of all sit around. And yes, it has like a heating element underneath it. And then it's covered all with a blanket. So you kind of sit at the edge of the little table and the blanket like covers the table completely and like kind of pools around the table. So you kind of go an inch up to the table and kind of put the blanket over like your lap and your legs are all like nice and cozy underneath the blanket of the corsi. So on top of the blanket is kind of like, you know, the tabletop, but it's like a little like soft. So you can have like little trays or plates and things like that. And on top of the corsi, you can also kind of set up your sofre or have like, you know, a bowl of fruit, a bowl of the tohme, a bowl of ajin and kind of pass that around and really sit around that corsi. So when we were little, we had like actually like a really small little side table thing that was maybe like just like three or four feet across. And I remember there was like a little like heater thing that we would put under it. And once in a while, I think in special occasion type of moments that that we kind of like gather around the course Eve to do like little tea time or like family tea time and things like that. So I have fine memories from those days, but I haven't sat at a Corsi or seen a Corsi really since then. But when you kind of talk to older generations about their thoughts and memories of Yanda, a lot of times it will incorporate them sitting around a Corsi. That's really sweet. And it makes me think about how can we bring elements that aren't necessarily exactly that, because I'm not sure that anybody is going to run out and actually put the Corsi together in today's heated environments. Right. And fire safety guidelines too. Right. But I know that in my cookie exchange party that I have every year, we started to do my cookie exchange party in our pajamas. (laughs) Oh, how fun. Yes. And not just any pajamas. I'm talking about like big, thick, flannel, cozy, warm pajamas. And I think definitely that ties into our coldest, darkest night and cuddling under a blanket and 
just gathering. And that's kind of the tie in for me partying in our pajamas. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Perfect. Well, that is going to be a great transition to our next way that people can enjoy Yanda this year. But before we get into that, we have a little clip that we want to share for you guys kind of keeping with the theme of sharing music and stories and poetry today as we celebrate Yanda. This one is actually from my mom. She in her youth used to play the Santur. And we actually still have a Santur, but it may be a little bit out of tune and it isn't used very much these days. But I asked my mom if she would participate in our Yanda episode by playing a few keys of the Santur, which is a really beautiful instrument. And we're going to share that with you now. Thank you so much, Mom on Joy. My mom, by the way, for all you listeners, she is an avid listener to the podcast, has listened to every episode at least one time. So thank you, Mom, for being part of our journey as well. Thank you, Mom on June. That's so special. What a skill. The Santur is such an iconic, very Persian instrument. Can you describe it in case our listeners don't know what it is, Bita Jun? I can try to, yeah. It's like a trapezoid type of shape, wooden string instrument. And the strings start on each side and kind of are suspended up by these little, like kind of little prongs along the sides of the santur. And the strings cross over those prongs and are attached on the other end. So you have kind of like two sets of strings. And you play the santur by using these very, very delicate hammers. I'm not sure exactly what the right name for it is, but very, very delicate pieces of wood that you, in rapid succession with your hands, you kind of tap on the strings right after each other and you tap and that's what actually makes the sound of the chord playing. So it's really beautiful. I love it. I think it's like you said, it's iconic, classic Persian instrument. When you hear kind of some of those songs, you can really hear the sound to it in the background and I love it. So beautiful and different. I was saying my mom used to play the accordion. We'll have to get our moms together and get a little music night going. That would be so great. That takes us to our segment where we want to talk about how you can bring Yelda into your existing events and holidays. I've already talked about how I want to put in some Yelda into my Christmas cookie exchange this year. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have Fess and June meatballs. Yay! Yay! So that's the Fess and June sauce that I put on my meatballs. The funny thing is that I always have meatballs at my cookie parties. It used to be the IKEA, for those of you that are in the U.S. IKEA has Swedish meatballs that you can get with a really yummy gravy. And I used to just get those for an easy appetizer and throw them in my crock pot. Well, since we've been podcasting and talking about these modern ways to bring in Persian flavors, I've switched over and been offering Fest and June meatballs at my parties, and they've been a huge hit. I'm also going to bring in some elements. I have a couple of cookies that represent pomegranates and watermelons. They're just simple sugar cookies that for the pomegranate cookie, I use the pomegranate arrows as part of the decor and make a sort of mistletoe design with fresh rosemary springs and pomegranate arrows designed on a white frosting round sugar cookie. And then for the watermelon sugar cookies, I make a round cookie that I then cut in half and decorate with the royal icing in the colors and pattern of watermelon. They're really cute. We'll have to post that somewhere so you can all see them. I'll also do my Agio little treat bags to pass out. And I am going to make like a huge grazing board. This is my other thing that I love doing are these like meze platters where they're just ornate with grapes and pomegranate and hard cheeses, persimmons put some ajil and other snacks. And so I'm really excited to also do that and kind of gather around that table like a coursey at my cookie party. 
Yeah, I love that. I love that. First of all, your little cookies are so cute. I remember when you made them last year, they looked so adorable. So those are really fun. Thank you. And yeah, your grazing boards, your like cartoonerie platters, they are always so beautiful and you do such a good job for that. So I think this is like a really great example of an existing holiday party that you're planning on having. But now you can incorporate a bunch of Yanda elements to it so that you really are continuing the tradition and sharing our culture, what we really want to do here and what we're doing with the podcast is just sharing these beautiful elements of our culture and the food and all the symbolism for people who are interested, people who have Persian backgrounds, people who just want to really be able to participate and celebrate the changing of the season. So great job. Thank you. And you know what, just to share all my friends of every background, nationality, American friends have been really receptive to it. They're like very excited. And I think it makes it more interesting and unique to see those elements brought into something. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think that like, there's just not a lot that people may know about kind of our culture in Iran and being Persian and things like that. So I think this is like a really a great opportunity to kind of showcase the positive elements and really kind of share our culture with people. Yeah, I'll try to grab some pictures of the event. Yeah. Well, we have a super special poetry reading. It was one of my favorite parts if you listened last year. It was so good that we wanted to bring it back. Yeah, thank you, Bita Jun. This is actually before my father passed away a handful of years ago. We have a recording of him reading excerpts of a poem from memory called The Symbols of Love by the artist Salik. We actually played that in last year's episode, but it's just such a special recording that we wanted to share that again. I also have a little translation that I came up with of the reading. So we would like to share that with you guys again here now, and we hope you like it. عشق یعنی کاهش رنج بشر عشق یعنی گل به جای خار باش پل به جای این همه دیوار باش عشق یعنی تشنه خود نیز اگر آب را با گذاری بر تشنتر عشق یعنی دشت گلزاری شده در کبیری چشمه جاری شده عشق یعنی شور را شیرین کنی عشق یعنی نیش را نوشین کنی هر کجا عشق آید و ساکن شود آنچه ناممکن بود ممکن شد Excerpts from What is the Sign of Love by Salik What is the sign of love? Love is nothing more than the presence of integrity, kindness. Love means to untangle a problem providing relief to those suffering. Love means to be a flower instead of a thorn, a bridge instead of all of these walls. Love means quenching the thirst of others more thirsty. Love means to make the sour sweet. Love means to extinguish the bite of a sting. Wherever love comes and settles, whatever was impossible becomes possible. So beautiful, so meaningful and relevant to all that's going on and our hopes and dreams for the future. I know we're not quite done, though. We want to talk about how to celebrate Yelda on a different night. Yes. It doesn't have to be on December 21st. You have some plans, B to June. Yeah, I mean, like, exactly to your point. You know, we really are just trying to share Yanda, celebrate Yanda. So if you can't do it on the exact solstice, no problem. You can also do it on a different night. I'm really excited about this, actually. My friend here in San Francisco, her name is Sarah. She had a really great idea of let's get all the kind of Persian kids and half Persian kids and the friends of the half Persian kids together and let's do a little Yanda celebration. So she is offering up her backyard here in the city and we are all going to get together and celebrate Yalda a little bit before Yalda, but I'm super excited about this. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to just really kind of share. We're going to give an overview of Yalda. There's going to be a Shahnameh reading. So one of the moms is going to actually like read parts of the Shahnameh for everybody. 
We're also going to do a little bit of dancing. One of the moms is going to do a little instruction on how to do a little bit of Persian dancing. So that'll be really fun with some music. And hopefully we're going to do a little bit of a Yanda inspired craft, maybe something with a watermelon or something to inspire everyone to set up their Sofreya Yanda at their homes this year. So fun. Can I come? (laughs) I'm sure you can. We would love to have you. So we really just wanted to give inspiration to everyone to celebrate Yalda this year. Really the light conquering darkness and sharing that with everybody and having that a part of your, if your life, of your, you know, cross-cultural life, your Persian life, however way you want to do it. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. We hope we've inspired you. We have an ask of you. If you liked this episode, if you were inspired and motivated and interested in Yalda, it sparked something in you, share it with one person. Share this episode with one person, a cousin, a sister, a friend. Forward the episode. We so appreciate it. Hearing from you is what fuels us to have the energy to keep putting out this great content for you. And happy Yalda night. Happy Yalda. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.